I believe that um, creativity and new ideas will not come from sitting in our comfort zone and doing the same like we used to do it over and over again. It comes from stepping out of our comfort zone and taking some risks. Having said that, um, it's easier said than done, especially when you are sitting at your desk looking at, on one hand at a grid with all you know, the, the um, attachments to its rating and then revenue, and subsequently you're looking at a balance sheet as well. So <laughs> failure you would be accounted for, and these decisions you have to uh, think them over and over before stepping out of your comfort zone, which is safe, which what, what you've been doing, what is uh, uh, generating rating and keeping the MBUs happy, and so forth and so on, versus trying something new, and you know, risking the failure, risking um, uh, the failure not only in terms of audience and in terms of rating, but in terms of, of advertising revenue. So it's not that easy to take these decisions, and um, I'm not saying this is right, but this is the nature of, of, of the business. At least um, with all its shortcomings in our region, because even we're not being helped from the starting point by a, 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 a daily uh, a people's, a people's meter um, a measurement tool that enables us as broadcaster or as MBUs or as industry to say yesterday 20 million or 10 million or 30 million have watched us. We still rely on a, um, a, a CATI uh, a telephony assisted uh, kind of, of uh, uh, approach that is produced on a monthly basis or on a daily uh, uh, diary that is is, uh, um, is gathered to, uh, on a monthly basis as well. So even the feedback is is delayed on one hand and is not extremely accurate as people's meter. Now it's it's not the, the you know the, the place to, to talk about uh, people's meter, but this is one of the shortcomings that we're facing. Um, definitely uh, uh, taking risk is needed, and if I may say calculated risk is needed to tap into these areas. Recently, there, there has been more than one way of, of looking at things rather than 30 second spot or the traditional sponsorship, even from within the classical industry, looking at product placement, at brand association, um, at uh, brand integration, and so forth, finding ways uh, uh, um, how we can monetize rather than only the broadcaster looking at it, I have to pay as, uh, so and so money and then it's not going to generate for me rate, enough rating to, to justify it. So at one hand, uh, taking risk is definitely the way forward uh, uh, in this respect. On the second level, it depends on, on the second question actually, it depends on the, uh, uh, on the type of content. Certain content can, f can fly across borders and can go from one place to the other. Let's remember that even you know, in terms of, of writing, Najib Mahfouz, when he took the Nobel uh, Award, he didn't take it because he wrote stories about New York. He, he, he wrote it when he, he was uh, talking about you know, the slums and, and the small streets of, of, of the popular and poor streets of Cairo. So locality is not a, a, a handicap or a shortcoming. Uh, uh, locality, if it is well made, People would try to, to watch it, uh, and, and I remember this with Frij, with all honesty. Um, I've been living in the Emirates for or, over seven, eight years. I can't pretend that I understand perfectly when, when I, a local Emirati day. I was struggling to understand what they were saying because I, I was interested in, in, in the characters. I was uh, liking what I'm uh, watching, and I wanted to understand the story. I wanted to understand the words. So this was pushing me, and the language wasn't, um, uh, was a challenge for me, but wasn't a complete barrier. So people would put an effort if they liked the content. However, uh, locality um, is at the same time, or, or the regionality within the Arab world, is I think it, this variety is richness as well. However, it has its shortcoming in the, in the financial sense. So if you're producing a classical uh, uh, Gulf uh, a drama series, you cannot monetize it and do your business plan on the basis that it would be sold to the Levant or to Egypt or to the North African. It would remain in that region. And therefore, you have to do your calculation accordingly. This is not the case for, for the, uh, traditionally, we are used to the Egyptian uh, uh, content in that part of the world and other content recently, Syrian. But yes, it has its uh, economic uh, implication. And this is also one of the challenges that, 
this industry is facing. Thank you. I mean, we could go on for a long time. The depth of insight that we're getting from the panel is just quite fantastic. But we, we want to try and move on and wrap up because we've got so much more content to deliver. I'm going to ask everybody two short questions, um, starting with our yeah, two questions. Are number one, um, has the kind of political context in the last eight or nine months unleashed any shift in terms of content generation, content creativity? Um, any shift in the, in the region, in the market, if you like. And number two, what could each of the panelists do to suggest ways to support, encourage, and give opportunity to young animators in the region? Because that's where we started off, and that's the subject of the day. So number one, any change in the last nine months? And number two, um, what can we do to support young animators, like the kinds of people we've seen already? Um, so to answer the first question, definitely, I mean, if anybody picks up an iPhone, looks at the App Store in the top apps, one of the uh, really unique apps that you're going to see that are apps related to the revolutions in Egypt and to uh, Gaddafi's uh, popular lines. Uh, so a lot of these apps started popping up and really accumulating big audience, mainly because it was the talk of the street, so obviously it had to uh, migrate into different platforms. One of them is mobile, obviously. Right. Uh, the beauty is when mobile gets to distribute quickly. Uh, if we talk about the app stores, if we talk about the Android market, mainly because users uh, download them fast. And when they download them fast, they see them uh, on leaderboards and they get to discover them quicker. Um, so that's to answer the first question. Uh, for the second question, um, the best thing the, the platform can do, speaking of mobile specifically, is really uh, lower the barrier. I mean, mobile by itself, with the, with the availability of uh, this new ecosystem provided by Apple and Android has really lowered down the cost to, to, to have a presence. Uh, you can really develop an app as low as $1,000 and, um, and and launch it on, on iPhone, for example. And Android is the same, same case. So it's not a, a big cost for you to reach your audience. Uh, obviously, there are lower costs when you go, for example, on the web. You can l literally launch a Facebook page, for example, for free and, uh, and develop your, and basically distribute your content and try to reach your audience direct. And you can go through basically channels. So you can go through Yahoo, you can go through Google, and, uh, and obviously reach more and more audience. Um, so the best way is to lower the cost, lower the barrier, and um, take the risks, as uh, somebody said earlier. Fantastic. Um, I'd be lying if I told you about the first side of the question and, and the effect of revolution on what I do. Um, other than you know, inspiring me to do an episode, which I did, but uh, uh, moving to the second part of the question, um, since day one, um, I think I've been through a journey that I learned a lot from, and I, I uh, you know, and I think a journey, this is a journey that many people can be inspired by and learn from, especially these people who have an idea that they think it's a very big idea and nobody will accept. Um, and that's why I make it a point that I usually come to such seminars, I go to universities on a, on a daily basis, uh, speak to different people, inspire them that, uh, you know, even if you are a one, you know, you're just a one person that don't, you know, don't be uh, scared or intimidated or, or anything. Uh, the other thing is that uh, on all our projects we have volunteers from universities who, you know, participate. Uh, in, in our projects, we, we have people interning in our uh, projects, and uh, and slowly uh, in our company, if you are like for example, I'm the director of the show, but I have three assistant directors now. Two years ago, I had none, and uh, for example, we started a program in my company whereby it's called the Me Project or Project Me, where basically we're giving each of the directors uh, five minutes to develop his own concept. That, that concept would never be shown to anyone and it might just go to a festival somewhere. But it's giving them that confidence that now they came, they joined for each, they worked on uh, the, the show, uh, they did the small things and then the next year they did some of the scenes. They, and now it's time for them to, you know, this is your space, mess it up. You know, you, nobody will see this. You know, we are here to help you as, as the director. And they work in Lamtara, which is the company, and they will get the sense, everybody will, helping them, will be helping them. So. Um, but you know, I'm doing what I can. But uh, I'm sure uh, you know if, if this is something that is uh, applied to all animation studios or uh, TV stations, so that that will help. Start. It's to get their feet into the industry. Media, yeah. media is a very intimidating, scary right. uh, thing. Uh, uh, sorry, but حتى سمعة الميديا عندنا إحنا نية يعني في المنطقة الخليج يعني مش محبوبة كتير. And it's not a very you know, especially for girls or stuff, they go like, oh, you're going into the TV, TV field. Yeah. It's like, they always associate it with uh, you being a presenter. For example, you'll end up being a presenter or 
which is not a bad thing, but uh, you know, we just have that mantra uh, of that. To get them involved, to you know, the business of media is a very uh, the business of media is a very interesting thing. So you know, so I think slowly but surely.